Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Moncrief and this is going to be a demonstration of StealthWatch Cloud and Tetration working jointly together to provide application workload visibility as well as network-based threat detection in a public cloud environment and the two solutions working together to actually do automated detection as well as real-time threat remediation. StealthWatch and Tetration, you'll find that as we talk about application-first security and cloud-native workloads, that uh, they really do uh, each fit a very unique uh, requirement in protecting these types of workloads. Tetration does a really great job of protecting the inside of the workload, giving visibility into the processes, uh, visibility into the applications that are running inside those workloads, letting the, the, the customer know what's known good as far as what those application dependencies are, and then, and then locking it down, fortifying that particular application so that the only thing running inside those workloads are what needs to be running in order for that application to function properly. And it's it's really at that point, once you've uh, implemented the segmentation policy that Tetration allows you to do, it allows you to do prevention because you're really, really reducing the attack surface by running Tetration inside of these different cloud workloads, whether they're virtual machines in the cloud, Kubernetes clusters, um, those types of, of workloads. Then you need something like StealthWise Cloud to actually protect the infrastructure itself, to illuminate the back end of the cloud provider service, um, to uh, do threat detection, to do network traffic analytics, to learn known good for these different entities as it relates to everything going on outside of the workload once it touches that network infrastructure. We're going to learn known good, model these different endpoints, and then look for behavioral-based threats uh, that might indicate uh, uh, indicators of compromise or just different types of malicious behavior going on with these workloads from a network threat perspective. But the two together really do a great job of giving you a 360 degree view um, and, and, and threat detection story about what's going on with these workloads all the way from the cloud infrastructure uh, back out into uh, traffic to and from the internet. Now, a little bit more about what Tetration does is it, it, it doesn't just come in and, and do segmentation. It's able to do vulnerability exposure. It looks for CVEs. Uh, it really it has full access to the host operating system. doesn't matter if it's Windows or Linux. Uh, it's able to see every process. Uh, but very, very important to the story that I'm about to show you is that it's able to actually control uh, the host firewall. And that's really going to be critical to the story that we're going to be showing here shortly uh, as far as remediation goes. Then you bring in StealthWatch Cloud. All right, We illuminate all the different entities all the way from virtual machines into uh, containers all the way over to serverless. And we learn known good. Then we start looking for these threats. So you understand the two technologies now that we've got in place, StealthWise Cloud and Tetration. Now, the demo that I'm about to show you uh, is uh, just a, it's a really common story as it relates to uh, threats and breaches in the public cloud environment over the last couple of years. You can be as, as compliant as you want to be. You can be um, as configuration uh, and, and rule-based compliant as you want to be. But ultimately, if someone gives away the, the keys to the front door, they're going to walk right in and they're going to have their way with your environment. And that's really been the story with the majority of public cloud breaches that we've seen over the last couple of years. So that's kind of the story that we're going to talk about here. So you can see on the left-hand side, we've got GitHub, all right? And GitHub has been a, a, a very uh, common place that attackers have been able to uh, expose credentials, to expose API keys, those kinds of things. And we're going to start with GitHub, and then from there, we're going to actually breach an Amazon EC2 instance. And we're actually going to take data from that instance, and we're going to uh, send it out to Dropbox. And so it's just a, a very straightforward, easy story about compromised credentials and then someone actually getting access to this cloud-based workload and starting to steal data. But we've also got Tetration running inside the EC2 instance, monitoring it 24-7. The same thing with StealthWatch Cloud. And we've got StealthWatch Cloud and Tetration integrated uh, via a very simple, uh, yet custom AWS Lambda function that's running some Python code, but it's just doing an integration between the two. And it even has an integration with, uh, with Cisco WebEx Teams to send a notification to the, uh, the SOC or the administrator that there has been a threat and we detected it and we remediated it. So with that being said, let's jump into the actual demo. So you can see here what we have, is a couple, just to set, kind of set the, set the environment 
for everyone. We've got my StealthWatch cloud account. Yes, I have a bunch of different things in it, Kubernetes, Azure. Uh, but most importantly, I've got AWS, all right? And if I click on AWS integration, you'll see that StealthWatch Cloud is monitoring through VPC flow logs and a set of permissions this entire AWS environment, these two different accounts. The one that we're really looking at here is this one. This is my personal lab account. And what we've also got is uh, some webhooks set up in my, my uh, StealthWise Cloud account. The one that we're talking about today is the StealthWise Cloud Tetration listener. And if I click it, you're going to see that it is set to send any alerts to this particular URL, okay, uh, that sits out in Amazon, uh, their AWS cloud. And what it really is, is it's a Lambda that's listening 24-7 through an exposed API gateway. And what that looks like is if I come in here to AWS, you see just StealthWise Cloud Tetration. I just went to Lambda functions and opened it up. And you can see that we've got some Python code. And then this particular Python code is exposed via an API gateway. And it is listening, as I showed you, for any sort of inbound traffic. And without going too far in depth into the actual Python code, what this is doing is it's actually listening for uh, any alerts coming in from StealthWatch Cloud, okay? If it sees an alert with the type of outbound traffic spike, then it is actually going to go back out to StealthWatch Cloud, query it, and it is going to get the IPs when it was created. So we need that IP address to help us with the actual remediation, okay? When it does that, it is now going to reach out over to Tetration, and it is going to set that particular uh, workload to a quarantine policy status. So right now it is not in quarantine that I'm about to show you, but it will be quarantined once we actually trigger that alert. And then finally, we actually send a message over to WebEx Teams saying that the threat has been neutralized. So this really is the middleman. This is the, the glue that's, that's, that's binding these two solutions together right now, um, but pretty simple and very, very easy to deploy. Then if I come over to Tetration, you're going to see that we have two policies. We have a quarantine policy and we have a global policy. Right now, the global policy is, is what is um, applied to my workloads. And you'll see that, yes, we have some absolute allows, but the default catch-all is also allow. So really, it's just monitoring. It's not really doing any sort of um, quarantining or policy enforcement. But you do see that we have a quarantine policy that um, has a Windows quarantine policy. And if I click it here, um, you'll see that really all it allows is remote desktop. Okay, so that's kind of the, the landscape from a StealthWatch Cloud and a Lambda and a Tetration perspective. Um, the next thing that I really want to show you is the workload itself. So the workload, before I uh, actually show you uh, the remote desktop session, I do want to make sure and, and show you this particular um, attribute, if you will. So if I search for this workload in Tetration, you will see that it has a quarantine status of false. OK, that means it is not being quarantined. All right, there is no policy that's being enforced on this particular workload right now. Now we're going to switch over to the actual workload. And it's just called uh, Contractor Jump Box. And this is uh, a little tough to see, I know. But this is an EC2 instance. It is a, it's a real virtual machine sitting out inside EC2. And if I actually just show you the task list here, you can see the Tetration agent is indeed running on it. So this is how we're monitoring the applications, the services, the processes, and the internal host firewall itself from a Tetration standpoint. You'll also see that the host firewall really has no uh, block rules in it. So this is the outbound rules. This is the inbound rules. Really no sort of enforcement. It's wide open. Um, and then if I actually just do a persistent ping, you'll see it can ping outside just fine. No issue whatsoever. So this is the actual workload itself. I'm just going to let this persistent ping run. All right. Now I'm going to uh, switch back over here and show you how the, the threat would, would play out. So I'm in my GitHub repository. And in my GitHub repository, I've got some private repos. I've got some public repos. Very common for any sort of organization that's putting code in, in GitHub and doing DevOps, DevOps types of CI/CD workflows. Uh, if I come over here to the StealthWatch repo, 
that I have, you'll see that we've got a couple of different files, and I'll zoom in here. So we've got a StealthWatch Cloud support.python file, and if I open that up, I can take a look at it, all right? This is not private. Anyone can browse this particular repo. And you'll see if I come through here, it's a, a StealthWatch Cloud uh, sensor support script that I've written. So if I'm an attacker, there's not really much of value here, kind of interesting, but I'm also gonna try and check out what this miscellaneous file is here. So if I open this file, Look at this. Temp DevOps contractor jump box info delete as soon as possible. Pretty interesting. Okay, probably not supposed to be here. Certainly probably not supposed to be in a public repo. Uh, but you, you see that we've got a URL. So I have no choice. I've got to try and figure out what's at this URL, right? So I'm going to go to this URL. Wide open perms bucket, and if I zoom in, you'll see that, oh wow, there's some contents here. We've got a StealthWatch Cloud free trial guide. We've got a uh, quick start guide. But then look at this, contractor jump box, delete me dot text. This looks juicy. So I'm gonna simply append that file name to the S3 bucket URL and see what happens. And look there, we've got an IP address, we've got a username and a password. All right, these are not legitimate credentials for obvious reasons, but you understand the story. Someone has found some credentials to a contractor jump box or what could have been an old contractor jump box. They really don't know until they try. Well, what happens when they try? When they try, they get in. And when they get in, what did they poke around and find? And for simplicity's sake, I just put a file right here on the desktop called customer database backup.zip. It's, uh, let's see how big it is, it's one and a half gig. This could be great. First thing I want to do as an attacker, though, is get it off here uh, and minimize, you know, the uh, the infractions that I'm doing on the, the actual compromised system, because this looks great. This might be like the crown jewels that uh, I can really take advantage of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this file out to Dropbox, so customer database backup. So the moment this starts occurring, okay, it's going to start doing outbound traffic, obviously. And throughout this entire process, StealthWise Cloud has been actually monitoring it. And there's a couple of the things that we would have alerted on, the brute force login attempts, if anyone uh, ever tried to hit the exposed instance, certainly the geographically uh, suspicious login when someone was able to finally get it, access to it. Internal recon before this even occurred, because I actually staged this off of a different instance um, that was attached to this one. But certainly, if it gets to this phase, we're going to start triggering a couple of different alerts and inside StealthWatch Cloud. And one of those that I'm going to show you here is called Outbound Traffic Spike. And you can see this is actually my AWS instance, the same one that we were just in. And this is when we triggered this alert when I initially uh, proved out this demonstration. And you can see that we've got um, at this timestamp here that this instance sent, because I did it twice, a little over three gigs of data out to Dropbox.com. All right, so this is StealthWatch Cloud alerting on that threat, but it would have alerted very, very early on. I just kept doing it just to keep proving it out and whatnot. But the moment that this triggers, this is what happens. If I come back over here to the actual webhook itself, you will see that uh, there's a history here. And this particular um, webhook that was sent right here, if I scroll down, you'll see that it's outbound traffic spike. So all I have to do at this point in time is re-deliver this, which is basically like the alert re-triggering. And what's gonna happen is it's going to immediately go contact that listener, the Lambda listener inside AWS, and it is going to do its job. It is going to parse it, contact Tetration, and do the automated remediation. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna click re-deliver. We're going to take a look at the response. It says, hello from Landa, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want it to say. If I come over here to the actual Lambda itself and go to monitoring and go to view logs in CloudWatch. And if I take a look at the actual file itself right here, the logs, you'll see that this is indeed the outbound traffic spike. And you can see all the way to the point of it actually quarantining the host. So the API is interfacing with both different solutions here. The, the Lambda is interfacing with both of them. Now, if I come back over to the workload, 
let's take a look at that persistent ping. Look at that. No more ping. And if I scroll up, you'll see where it got killed off. Right there. And if I take a look at the host firewall and do a quick refresh, you'll see that Tetration has now inserted two block rules for inbound traffic, as well as a couple of block rules for outbound traffic. And if I come over to the actual uh, Tetration uh, user interface, and if I re-query that particular workload's uh, annotations, take a look at this. Quarantine is now true. So Tetration has indeed quarantined it. And if you wanted to, you could also come over to um, the actual uh, workloads themselves and take a look at the, uh, the quarantine policy and you'll see that there is indeed one workload that is now in the Windows quarantine policy that is indeed this workload. So at this point in time, we have proved out that StealthWatch Cloud is able to detect a significant anomaly with the endpoint, with the tetration running inside it, and then StealthWatch Cloud is able to um, automatically trigger an alert and pass that alert over to tetration, which is able to do automated remediation. And that concludes the StealthWatch Cloud tetration integration demonstration.